wait a minute, how can this be, Donovan? How could she go on two dates on the same night with two different men? She's not. She gets a free meal, and then she goes on the date. Here's how it works. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and today's article was submitted by Anonymous J, so a special thanks goes out to him. Now, the article he submitted is entitled, quote, Dear Men, This is Why Single Women Are Sick of You. Now, we don't know who wrote the article because she decided to remain anonymous, which means she's an older female who is far less attractive than she used to be. How can I make this assumption? Easy. If she were young and attractive, she'd have put her name and face on the article. You see, gentlemen, despite what older females may say or post on social media, they know that they are in no position to make demands of anyone, much less high-value men. They know that their best years are behind them. They know they've been ran through by men into the triple digits. And for these reasons, they are acutely aware of the fact that they have forfeited their right to make any demands. That said, this certainly doesn't stop them from vocalizing their requirements, but deep down, they know the score. Which is why whoever wrote this post doesn't want us to know who she is or how old she is. Because if we did, people would quickly remind her that she is old, unattractive, and way too entitled to be taken seriously. So she decided to pen this post as though she were 21 instead of north of 41, so that will take her more seriously. Unfortunately, women these days aren't entitled to anything regardless of age. So let's break this bad boy down and show women that this is not the way to get what you want and need out of a man of value. Dear men, she starts, no thank you. Yeah, I said it and I'll explain. I am uninterested in casually hooking up with you. No thank you. There is no appeal to the nail biting weight for a text message since we all know a phone call is off the table after you sleep with me. So she gets off to a fast start here. When a woman says that she is uninterested in a casual relationship with you, it means she is most assuredly interested in a casual relationship with you. And the reason that men who are good with women understand this is because if a female you're out with says, just so you know, I'm not sleeping with you tonight, it means that bedroom fun is on her mind. And if bedroom fun is on her mind, then she is clearly aroused by you and wants to hook up with you. No matter how much women try to hide the truth, they simply cannot. Oh, they'll try, but they will always leave a trail of breadcrumbs that eventually lead to the truth. Now, some breadcrumbs may be harder to see than others, but trust me when I tell you they're there. And if you're fluent in womanese, you will definitely see them. Anyway, the fact that this woman says she's uninterested in casual relationships with men tells us that she's used this line before, and the men who took her at her word didn't sleep with her, while the men who read between the lines, men who are fluent in womanese, acted accordingly and got with her. Now, having been through this more times than she can count, but not realizing that she's telegraphing her carnal interest, she thinks that by putting this phrase in an article means that we think that she's not interested in casual hookups. Of course she is. All women are interested in casual hookups with the men that give them tingles. What she's doing here in the beginning is filtering out the men she's not interested in. The men who will say, Okay, I respect you. I won't try to sleep with you. Girls do this in person. They do this online. And they do this on dating apps. This reinforces one of the most pervasive doctrines in my line of thinking, which is never believe what a woman says. Watch what she does. This woman has used this line hundreds of times and has given it up dozens of times, and she loved every minute of it. Yet, here she is revealing that she's been passed around by reciting the first line of the Banana Gobbler's Anthem word for word. Then, of course, she says that waiting for a text message after a one-night stand is something that is unappealing. Now, in her defense, she is actually right. There isn't anything appealing about waiting for a guy to text her the next day to make her think that she was more than just a receptacle during the 13 minutes he spent at her apartment, five of which were spent getting dressed and undressed before he bounced. But where she's being ignorantly dishonest is that this is what turns women on. Women love this torture, guys. No, they certainly don't like it, and it's certainly not appealing. But low-quality females always, and I mean always, respond favorably to this kind of torment inflicted by the men she's turned on by, which is a telltale sign she's got a high body count. A woman of potential quality never sticks around when guys treat her like this because number one, she doesn't sleep with guys on the first date in the first place, and number two, they don't reward this kind of behavior. They don't give guys more attention when they run a whole game or treat her like garbage all the time. So here's lesson number one. Never commit to a woman who rewards bad behavior. No, I'm not talking about exhibiting traditional masculinity like raising your voice when necessary, letting her know that her behavior isn't feminine, or telling her that she's gaining weight and that she needs to handle it if she wants to keep you around. 
Oh no, I'm talking about D-bag jerk boy PUA behavior, acting like you don't care when you actually do, and texting one word answers after three hours. If she treats you well when you treat her like garbage, do not make her your girlfriend. Trust me when I tell you that you will regret it. I speak from personal experience. Speaking of acting like you don't give a bleep, let's continue. She says, quote, there is nothing delicious about hoping that you give a bleep or having to play it cool because I do give a bleep. So she lets us know again that she's been passed around by bad boys by the dozen. I want to go on dates, she continues. Yes, dates, not hangouts. That distinction is important, she says, because a hangout could mean that we're going to walk around the mall like we did at 14 when our moms were our only means of transportation. A hangout implies that we're bros. I have enough friends, sir. No, thank you. You know, demanding that men actually take them out on these extravagant dates seems to be a growing trend among low quality females these days. They're becoming more and more vocal about their desire to be wine and dined by high value men. A while back, I saw a meme posted by a woman that said, can we go back to guys holding doors, pulling out chairs and holding hands because we like you? And my response to that is when the hell did you ever give guys like this the time of day in the first place? How can you want to go back to something you clearly didn't like based on your actions? Today is women acting like they would reward gentlemanly behavior with their bodies, attention and loyalty. It's like a dentist telling you that eating candy all day and never brushing your teeth will give you sparkling white chompers. Not gonna happen. Requiring dates is simply a ploy that women use for a couple of different reasons. Number one, to make men think that they are quality women. And number two, to get free meals. Whether men are clueless or not, dudes are starting to figure out that they don't have to take girls out to get some action and women don't like it. They don't like that the code's been cracked. They don't like that we already know they're gonna give it up anyway. So we act accordingly and refuse to buy what we can get for nothing. This is where the law of supply and demand has come back to bite women in their collective backsides. Because there is such an abundance of girls who give it up for nothing, this makes the commodity of their lady parts a lot less valuable. And the less valuable something is, the less people are willing to pay for it. Simple math. But this is what women wanted. They wanted freedom without judgment or consequences, and they got it. But the unintended consequence is that it has created a market that is completely saturated with females who don't require anything, much less a date, to give it up. So let me get this straight. This woman, who by the way, is at least a decade and a half past her expiration date, who gave her body to hordes of men for next to nothing when she was in her 20s, which was the time she should have and could have required a lot more, now wants men to take her on dates before she sleeps with them? She wants men to pay more for something less valuable when she gave something more valuable away for free? Get out of here with that. Men in demand aren't gonna pay for something that everybody's already gotten for free. So here's lesson number two, and this one's for the ladies. Ladies, if you want men to take you on dates, then stop sleeping with men before they take you on dates. Show some discipline, show some decency, show some restraint. Understand this, ladies. Wanting to be intimate with a guy doesn't make you a banana gobbler. Being horny doesn't make you a cucumber connoisseur. Getting turned on doesn't make you an eggplant enthusiast, but acting on these desires every single time you get the itch does. It's not a sin to want to have hookups with guys. You're human, it happens, it's how you're designed. But not showing temperance in the face of temptation every single time does not make you deserving of dates. It makes you deserving of something else that starts with the letter D. When you say you want to take me on a date, she continues, I know you're taking it seriously and that I'm not going out with some 19 year old kid, which wasn't appealing even when I was 19. I want you to ask me out a few days before and plan something. I want you to put some effort into dating me. I don't need flowers, she says, but GD, some sign that you care would be nice. So she reinforces another immutable truth about the dating market, which is that young women are much more attracted to men who are older than they are. Yes, any given 20 year old woman will hook up with guys who are in her age range, but by and large, young women are much more likely to commit to older men than guys their own age. But here's where the rubber meets the road in this paragraph. She says she wants guys to ask her out a few days before and plan something to show that they care. Gentlemen, this is friend zone bait and I'll tell you why. Today's women put men into one of two categories. The first category is the ones that they'll use for all of their non-carnal needs. The second category are the ones they'll use exclusively for her carnal desires. Well, why do women do this, Donovan? Why don't they just commit to the men they use for their bedroom needs? Oh, they do, or at least they try to. But because men with options tend to exercise those options, meaning they don't commit to a woman until they're damn good and ready and she proves herself over an extended period of time, women know these guys aren't going to take them out. 
They know these men are not going to give them free rides. They know these men have no interest in helping them move or doing them favors or talking about their feelings for four hours on the phone. So to compensate for what she's not getting from the men she's only getting sausage from, she gets them from the men she'd never fool around with. And the telltale sign of a man who is clueless is a man who sets up a date three and four days after he approached her. And during those four days when he's planning a date, she's gobbling bananas, including on the night of the date. Wait a minute, how can this be, Donovan? How could she go on two dates on the same night with two different men? She's not. She gets a free meal, and then she goes on the date. Here's how it works. At 5 o'clock, she gets her free meal from the guy who put effort into planning the date and acting like he cared. He'll tell her how pretty she is. He'll tell her how lucky he is to be sitting with her and all the rest of that. He'll tell her it's so refreshing to meet a low-maintenance girl who doesn't wear makeup. He'll listen to her drone on and on about her abusive, controlling ex she kept going back to even though he was also sleeping with her best friend and her mother. He'll tell her she deserves better and that her ex is a terrible guy and doesn't deserve a queen like her. He will then pay the $120 dinner tab, which included three margaritas, one of which she ordered when he went to the bathroom without his permission. Then he will drive her home, kiss her on the cheek, thank her for a wonderful evening and that he'd love to take her out again. And of course, she will accept his offer. Now, when he leaves, she'll go upstairs, she'll shower and shave. She'll put on makeup. She'll wipe off the lip gloss so she can slather on red lipstick. She'll take off her jeans and t-shirt and pour herself into a skirt so short it won't need to come off when the time comes for a little hanky-panky, which she's hoping for. She'll put on a tube top that can be easily pulled up or down. She'll take out her ponytail and curl her hair just like he likes it, and she'll put in the hoop earrings. And finally, she'll take off the flip-flop she wore to get her free meal and put on the seven-inch heel she can barely walk in. Then she picks up her phone and texts her ex to ask him whether or not he wants her to wear panties when she comes over in a half an hour to get plowed into the next dimension. So no, she's not going on two dates with two men on the same night. She gets a free meal from one guy and gets her back blown out by the other. And I can guarantee you that dude number two doesn't call it a date. After that date, call, she says. It's not that hard. It's refreshing. The two-day waiting period should be a myth, she says. Unfortunately, it's not. But think about how silly it is. Oh my God, that woman was amazing and I definitely want to see her again. But instead of just making it happen, I'm going to make her sit around and wonder if I like her or not. Following through shouldn't be a rarity. Oh, but it's not a rarity, sweetheart. In fact, most guys do call after the date. Most guys don't give you the two-day waiting period. Most guys don't make you sit around and wonder whether or not the girl likes him. Most guys do follow through. You see, your problem is that the guys who do do these things for you are the guys you ghost on. They're the guys you flake on. They're the guys you move dates up to the afternoon so they can feed you and buy you drinks because the guy you're going to meet later on, the guy who doesn't take you on dates, the guy who doesn't call you back after he plows you and kicks you out of his place, the guy who leaves you wondering whether or not he likes you, he doesn't feed you or buy you drinks. A girl's got to eat, right? This woman's problem is twofold. Number one, she wants beta behavior from alpha males and that ain't happening. Number two, like all Western women, she treats the guys who treat her like a lady, like garbage. These old maids out here expecting men to just all of a sudden start treating them like princesses simply because they've decided to stop giving away their bodies to anything with a white chromosome and a pulse is pathetically laughable. Ain't nobody calling you back, sweetie. You had your share of callbacks. You've had your share of men following through. Countless men have communicated their interest in you early and often, but all they got in return was the finger. So yeah, as long as you continue to reward the men who treat you like the gum on the bottom of their shoe, they're going to continue to treat you the way you deserve to be treated, which is not like a lady. And you know what? You'll beg for more because women like you, you love this torture. I want you to be honest, she continues. Whoa, scary, I know. Here's the thing, we're both adults. I don't need you to tell me what you think I wanna hear. No, thank you. I can call my mom and have her tell me how pretty I am if I really need to hear it. The idea that you feel like you need to tell me something you don't believe just so you can get into my pants is ridiculous. If I want to sleep with you, I will. It's totally that simple. I don't need to hear some long rambling speech about how incredible you think I am when in reality, you're just trying to get lucky. I would rather know upfront what you're interested in. If we go out and you don't want to see me again, brace yourself because this is going to be hard to understand. Don't tell me that you do. Believe it or not, women don't want to be lied to, she says. I'm not going to tell you some fairy tale story about how wonderful you are if I don't think it. Let's start from the top here. First of all, men who know how to handle women never tells a woman she's pretty. They know that they get told they're pretty from sunup till sundown. 
Secondly, the men who tell women how incredible they think they are are the men women ignore for the men who do not. Third, girls go absolutely mental when men are honest with them about not wanting to see them again because they never handle rejection well. You see, gentlemen, women do want to be lied to, but once again, they want to be lied to by the men they want, and the men they want never tell them they're pretty or amazing. Once again, she wants beta behavior from alpha males. She's had dozens of dudes blow sunshine up her you-know-what, but not the men she wants. So here's lesson number three, guys. Women only want honesty when it doesn't hurt their feelings. Girls are steady moaning and groaning about, be honest with me, be real with me. But as soon as you tell her, look, it's been fun, but I don't want to see you anymore. It's OMG, you a-hole. Please don't freak out, she continues, if I want to talk to you. I like you, stop panicking. If you don't like me back, she says, see above. It's okay if we talk. It's okay if you want to talk to me or want to see me again. Don't wait until it's too late to decide you want me. I was seeing this guy for a while, a couple years back, she continues, and we did the whole playing it cool and casual fling thing on and off for almost a year. Well, he did. I had no issue being like, hi, I like you. I hope that's okay. I knew he liked me back, she said. Honestly, we were a good match, but he waited until he moved 3,000 miles away to admit having feelings for me. What's even more alarming is that even though we've had the discussion about where we both stand, he is still timid. He's still weird about being anything other than bro about it. The last time I saw him, we went on this sweet date, and the next day he was so uncomfortable with me. Why? Who gives a bleep? Can someone please explain, she asks, what is so scary or shameful about having feelings and being willing to express them? I don't need to have a 45-minute daily discussion about the fuzzy wuzzies, but I shouldn't be afraid to terrify you if I have an emotion other than horniness. I won't tell anyone if it's something you're embarrassed about, but you are capable of having feelings, aren't you? Since this woman seems to be feigning ignorance and pretending she doesn't know the answer to her own question, allow me to humor her and any other female watching or listening and explain exactly what is so scary and shameful about expressing feelings for a woman. And listen good, ladies. When a man expresses feelings for a woman they're seeing, a funny thing starts to happen. All of a sudden, she doesn't call or text as often. She's more entitled, she's more short-tempered and disrespectful. You see, before he told her he had feelings for her, she wanted to spend time with him. She wanted to make him happy. She wanted to make sure he knew that she was his and only his. But after he tells her he likes her, she wants to go to the club with her friends instead of staying in with him. Instead of doing her best to make sure she was his and nobody else's, now she wants to make him wonder about whether or not he's the only guy she's sleeping with. You see, ladies, when we tell you and show you that we like you, you do a complete 180. You stop doing the things that made us like you in the first place. But when we stay all bro -y about it, you can't get enough of us. So much, in fact, that it appears you'll stick around for a solid year, hoping against all hope that we will one day confess our love for you. Even if we move 3,000 miles away, you still go out on sweet dates with us and sleep with us when we're in town, and sometimes you will fly cross-country to see us. So why on God's green earth would a man who's gotten the proverbial finger from all the women he's told he has feelings for continue to make the same mistake? Why would men ignore what women have been telling us with their actions all our lives, which is, please don't tell me you have feelings for me. If you do, I will stop returning your calls and texts. I will withdraw my affections. I will give you less bedroom fun. I will become neurotic and disrespectful and will make your life miserable. The reason that I do this is because when you tell me you like me, you become a conquered mountain and those are boring. So if you want me to continue giving you my best, never ever tell me how you truly feel. Because if you do, I promise I will make you regret it until you finally grab your white chromosome and dump me, which is exactly what I wanted in the first place. That's why. In general, she continues, it seems like there is an unwillingness for men to be men. I'm not talking about when you guys take us out and open doors. That's sweet and all, but that's not it. I'm talking about the unwillingness to connect, to be vulnerable, to step up. I am flabbergasted by how few men will take responsibility for their emotional choices and the damage they leave behind post-relationship. Please don't get me wrong, she says, women aren't innocent of dating crimes. There are women who will bail, ghost, use, cheat, manipulate, and lie. People tend to suck in general, but obviously it's not everyone. I'm aware, she continues, that there are men in the great wide somewhere who don't act like idiots. Otherwise, the human race would have ended centuries ago. So here's my request, surprise me. Surprise the girl you're dating. Be real. Pretend like there are TV cameras waiting on bated breath for your emotional honesty. Share like there's a million dollar commercial deal waiting at the end of the season. It might work out for you. 
Sincerely, she says, a female dog who seriously ain't got time for that. This is hilarious. So she points out what she characterizes as an unwillingness of men to be men and be vulnerable and connect and to step up. But she wants to moan and groan about the damage men leave in their wake, but then turn around and say, okay, I understand women do it too, but I still want good treatment from men. Is she serious with this? Did she really just gloss over and minimize the deplorable, licentious, disgusting behavior that just about every woman exhibits in just about every single relationship they're in? Did she really just acknowledge that women are absolutely terrible wives and girlfriends, but then turn around and say that people tend to suck in general in a feeble attempt to put men and women in the same category? Yes, gentlemen, she did. And so does every other woman who believes that they still have the right to request that men treat her like princesses, even though they've acted like a concubine until about an hour ago. Then she gets all pithy with her cute little sign off at the end. Sincerely, a B word who seriously ain't got no time for that. How cute. Newsflash, darling, you had all the time in the world for that 20 years ago, and you chose to continue your banana gobbling ways. And at your age, you have neither the time nor the dating market value for that. Request denied, you old hag. Go back to getting used and abused by the men you're complaining about. And if you just believe in yourself, if you truly believe that you can make a man of value realize what he's been missing and forgo his perverted taste for young, attractive feminine women in favor of used up masculine women like you, it just might work out for you.